I'm just a little annoyed because I just filmed all of this with my fan on and you couldn't hear me talking. Hi everyone! Today I went to go edit my children's book video um, where I talked about how I made the book for my school project and I realized that there's a lot of really nice clips of me like painting and writing and doing all the important things that one needs to do to make a book but there's no narration. Like I never explained what's going on. So lucky for you, I'm here, I'm going to fix it and today we're going to talk about how I made my children's book. So before you get too excited, this isn't like a real children's book. I made it for a school project, however that all being said, you can buy it if that's all you care about and you just want to know about the book itself. It's right here. It's called Beyond the Dawn. You can buy it on Amazon. I'll put the link right down in the description, right at the top of the description, so if that's all you care about you can go look at it. Um, it'd be really nice if some of you could leave me a review if you buy it. I know um, I've been kind of MIA on here for a little bit, but if there are people out there watching, um, let me know. Anyway, the book is called Beyond the Dawn. It's an illustrated children's book. I believe it's 36 pages. I could be making that up. Um, I think it's 36. And I illustrated it, wrote the story. I did it for a class I took on children's literature, and this was my final project that I worked on for most of the semester. Um, and that's just what I'm going to talk about in this video. I hope you like it. Uh, if you do, give me a comment, let me know, and I'll see you all in a second. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a... Um, starting a process video for a project that I'm going to be working on. Our new semester just started here at school last week and one of my classes that I'm taking is a children's literature class. And the final project for this class is to create a children's book. It can be a picture book or like a children's um, middle grade uh, like novel, any kind of story that's geared towards children. I did want to start this video now and try to walk you guys through the process of creating the children's book because I thought that would be really interesting um, to see. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet so we'll be learning together and um, I'm just going to show you what I have so far. Alright so I don't have a tripod at the moment so this is going to be a little bit of an awkward angle and I apologize for that but I just wanted to show you the sketches that I've done so far for this. I'm pretty sure they start on this page. So these are some of the characters that I'm thinking of for the book. This, this is our main character. This is kind of an early idea I had for her and um, she's evolved a little bit since then, as you'll see. So this was one I have these little sprigs coming out of her hat, and I thought that was just a cute touch. Um, this guy over here is another one of the characters in the book, more of a side character. He's just called the wizard so far. I'm not sure if he's ever going to get a more in-depth name than that. These are some mixed sketches. This one right here is actually one that I created into two different finished pieces. This is a scanned version of that sketch. And then so far I've been working on these character designs, so this is Clover again. Now she's not going to quite look like this, she looks kind of too round and squished um, in a weird way, like the proportions are wrong, but this is kind of the um, look I'm going for for the wizard. And so basically like I said in that clip, this project was for a class. I wrote the story before I started the illustrations for the most part, and most of my time was spent putting the actual book together with the illustrations. The illustrations took me forever and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, the book went through multiple phases. I have a proof copy of here, where the, of it right here, where the colors cover, where they cover, the cover is green. I like the green cover, sorry I'm going to drop everything, but I think it looks weird because she doesn't stand out quite as much. Um, she's got a lantern and it's the middle of the day, it's bright. So I didn't go with that. So basically I did a bunch of watercolor illustrations and they're all in this giant folder. I don't know if you can see. No, no you can't. It's just like full of illustrations and I guess I would talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process if you're interested. I used watercolor for all my illustrations which you'll see in the video. I did some of them on like big pieces of watercolor paper like this one right here. But this got a little tedious because I had to go scan them in at Staples every time I did them, which isn't expensive, it's like a dollar or something. But once the stay at home order started, I couldn't be going and running off to Staples to scan all my things. So I did most of my, luckily did most of my big backgrounds at the beginning of the project and then did my other um, smaller pieces like the characters that I then photoshopped in later. So this is another big one. This one was like a reject. This is one of my original cover designs. I think I had four cover designs and I ended up going with the blue one that you saw at the beginning. So that was one of them. There was just too much going on. I used Mission Gold watercolors for everything in this book. 
which was, um, I don't know, fine. They were just the colors or the paints that I had at school. So this is one of the pictures from the beginning. This one is in my time lapse, I'm pretty sure, where I do um, this scene, which is from the beginning of the story where she is first, uh, where the reader is first like, introduced to the setting, I guess. This is the Kingdom of the Dawn. We talked a lot about like setting and character and um, just general like basic characteristics of a children's story in the class I took. We talked about, uh, we read a lot of children's books and discussed what the authors did well and what made those books so successful. So we read a lot of really successful children's books. We read uh, Harry Potter, the first Harry Potter book. We read Charlotte's Web. We read The Snowy Day, um, Where the Wild Things Are, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, different genres of um, children's books and uh, everyone had to make a book for their final project. We did some little projects where we did illustrations and like short children's stories um, throughout the class, but basically the whole big idea of it was creating the final project, which was the children's book that we all made. So it was really fun to workshop each other's projects. We each got a day in class to workshop our projects with everyone, and we um, I have like a bunch of response letters from my classmates. It was a super fun class. Nice. Um, fun environment. I like everybody. It was a good time. This is the first scene that I actually painted. It's the forest scene. I don't have a time lapse of it and I wish I did because I think it's probably the one that took me the longest. I also don't know how to do this. Um, but I just really loved all the trees. This was when I kind of um, was still figuring out the plot. This is just the scene that I could see most clearly and I was like I need to start my illustrations because I have a deadline. So I started with this one because it was the one that I could visualize well. And um, it turned out really well. It's actually probably my favorite page in the book, which is why it's one of the ones that I like posted on Instagram and stuff. So as I said, I started doing the pages or the um, illustrations smaller. So here's one here. And then a lot of my time was spent drawing the different pieces that I then, <laughs> sorry, that I then uh, pieced together to make the book. So this is one of the two friends that she meets. The little well that she goes to. I have a lot of drawings of the main character, really the only like human character besides the wizard. Her name is Clover, so I have this one. A lot of these I didn't end up using because about a week before the project was due, I was like, you know what would be fun? Let's redo every single drawing of the girl. So I did that. This I love. This is the map of the kingdom, which is kind of, I don't know, Right here I also have a drawing that's the map of the kingdom. So my idea was, I don't know if it came across, but like this is the map that you get. This is the map that's on the page where we get introduced to the wizard dude. Um, and it's like this on the page actually. <laughs> and uh, later in the book she's packing up all of the supplies that she needs to take on her like adventure into the woods and she packs up this blue map. So my like theory was, hey, it's like this map of the kingdom. She needs to know how to get through the woods. Um, Anyway, I don't know if that's interesting to anyone but me. To do the text for this book, I used... I was thinking it's over here. I moved it. I used a typewriter that actually belonged to my great-grandpa. It's been in our basement forever. And I typed up all of the text on this paper, which if you look really closely at it, which you're not going to be able to see on camera, it's like speckled paper, um, which came through in some of the little pieces of text in the book. But I just typed out everything um, over and over again because I can't type anything without making a mistake. Scanned it all in and then cut out the little pieces that I needed for each page in Photoshop. So in the final version it looks like this where we have like lines of text that are separated so they look like in theory someone like cut out a piece of typewritten text and pasted it on here. I wanted it to look really traditional. I didn't want to use regular um, text. So that was the thought.
as I said, I painted a lot of things that I didn't end up using, like this random painting of the castle, um, this drawing of her. Um, I just have a lot of stuff that I did and then eventually decided, like, I'm gonna do something else, um, which really just made things more difficult. This was my, uh, green cover option, the second cover option that I had. And then I did a lot of, like, photoshopping, photoshopping, I used Procreate. So I did, like, this drawing of the sign and photoshopped it into the last page in the book, which is the same drawing as the opening page in the book, it's just a different scene, it's an illustration of the kingdom. So I have like this drawing of the birds that I photoshopped in, this drawing of the trees, which is one of my favorite little scenes. I like that. This, like this drawing, I don't think, yeah, I didn't end up using this. It's irrelevant, but she's here. This was the drawing that I actually ended up using. This is Clover's house. Um, Clover's house is in the tree and that's why it's conflict for her that like the forest is being cut down because it's her house. But this is her house in the tree and then I had an original design for it. My original design for it was like this where the house was like up in the tree which is fine like it's fine but the tree style doesn't match the style of like the other trees that are in the book. It's weird and I guess that's fine and I don't hate this but I don't know. It didn't work. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap things up now um, before it gets too hot in my room. I had to shut my door and turn the fan off and I live in an old house with no air conditioning and it's 90 today. But I'm gonna wrap this up by talking about how I actually um, like published the book, I guess. Like how I um, got the printed copy. This one. Basically what I did is I used Kindle Direct Publishing, which contrary to what the name sounds like is not just for your Kindle, it's not just for ebooks. You can use it to print any kind of like paperback book, um, from like picture books to comic books to, um, I don't know, novels, whatever, you know, whatever you want. The downside of it is that it is a pain in the butt to use. Um, it took me a lot of trial and error. And a lot of that was something that I could have avoided if I would have, like, ran things through. So while I'm not going to talk about how to use Kindle Direct Publishing in here, I will link some videos down below um, that I use. But one big tip, if you're going to make a book using Kindle Direct Publishing, which is great because the printing costs are low, it's a free software to use even though it's a pain, do not do what I did and do little borders around your page. Do you see how this has, like, a border around it? Like this page has this brown border around it. They hate that. Kindle Direct Publishing does not want you to have borders. Don't argue with them, just listen. Because if you're, they have like certain margins set for the page sizes. And the reason that they have like a margin, they will send you an email once you submit your book, your manuscripts for review, your PDF of your book. And they'll say like, oh, your text is too close to the edge of the page. You need to move your text. So I did that a couple times. There were a couple times where I didn't quite measure the borders correctly according to their templates and I had to adjust it. What they don't say is that, like, I guess this is common sense, but I don't have that. The reason that they cut, that they don't want you to have um, text close to the edge is because not all the printing is precise. So if you have a border, not every copy of your book is going to print with the same amount of border on each side of the page because of the way things are cut. Um, I guess they just don't align it properly. Um, so it took a lot of trial and error and a lot of ordered um, proof copies to make sure that I had one where everything lined up fine and everything went well. And like for instance on this version of the cover, there's no border on top, but there's a nice border on the side. So, I don't know. Okay, um, sorry to like rush the ending of this, but my camera's gonna die and I've been meaning to get this video up since March, <laughs> so I'm going to stop recording here. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, leave them in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I don't use my like official Enchanted Quill Instagram that often because I'm a terrible person, but if you send me a message there I get a notification and I'm always like on there stalking people, so uh, follow me there if you are into that. And uh, I'll see you all next time. I have a video planned and I don't want to say that too loudly because we know what happens when I have plans. They don't happen. But I'll see you all next time. I hope you liked my video. If you did like it, uh, subscribe to Enchanted Quill and I'll see you later. Bye.